It began with a whisper from the far reaches of the solar system, a faint, almost imperceptible blip in the endless river of data streaming into Earth's most sensitive observatories. At first, it was nothing more than a statistical anomaly, the kind of background noise that scientists are trained to ignore. But this whisper did not fade. It grew louder, more insistent, crossing the desks of astronomers in Chile, Japan, Australia, and Europe. Within days, the anomaly had a name, 3IE Atlas. And within weeks, it had a reputation, not as another comet or lifeless rock, but as something that moved with purpose. When world-renowned physicist Mio Kaku stepped onto the stage of the International Science Forum, the air in the auditorium was electric. Cameras clicked, pens hovered over notepads, and the world waited. His voice was steady, but his words carried the weight of history. An interstellar object, designated 3IE Atlas, has entered our solar system. It is not behaving like anything we have ever observed before. The room fell silent. The first sightings. 3IE Atlas was first detected by a deep space observatory orbiting far above Earth's atmosphere, a place where the interference of our planet's magnetic field and weather is stripped away, leaving only the raw, unfiltered light of the cosmos. At first, the signal was dismissed as a glitch, perhaps a flicker of cosmic dust or a burst of background radiation. But cross checks with ground based telescopes in South America, Europe, and Australia confirmed the same readings. Something was out there, moving in from beyond the Kuiper Belt. And it was moving differently. Natural interstellar visitors, like the famous Aumuamua or Kame Borisov, follow predictable gravitational arcs, accelerating as they fall toward the sun. But 3IE Atlas was doing the opposite. It was slowing down, as if resisting the sun's pull. Its trajectory shifted in ways no tumbling rock could manage, adjusting its path with surgical precision. This meant one of two things. Either it possessed a propulsion system unknown to human science, or it was manipulating gravity itself. When scientists began analyzing its electromagnetic signature, the mystery deepened. Instead of the chaotic scatter of radiation expected from a natural body, Atlas emitted faint rhythmic bursts across multiple frequencies, including the radio spectrum. These bursts were not random. They came in intervals like the ticking of a clock or the syllables of a language. Its surface reflectivity, or albedo, was equally strange. It absorbed sunlight in unusual amounts, but instead of re-radiating that energy as heat, it released infrared pulses in sharp timed bursts. To some, it looked like data packets being sent to an unseen receiver. For Miyokaku, the analogy was simple. It's like finding a bottle in the middle of the ocean. The bottle itself is not mysterious, but you know it was made and you know it was sent with purpose. When Atlas journeyed through the solar system seemed almost choreographed, it approached planets close enough to study them, but never close enough to risk collision. Projections showed it would skim the edge of Jupiter's magnetosphere using a gravitational slingshot, a maneuver familiar to every space agency on Earth. Human spacecraft use this technique deliberately to save fuel. Nature does not perform it with such precision. Even stranger, Atlas made subtle course corrections, tiny adjustments that kept it on an optimal path, as if conserving energy for a much longer journey. Who or what controls it? Miyukaku suggested two possibilities. Advanced Autonomous Navigation, a probe capable of making decisions without human or alien intervention, or real-time remote control, meaning somewhere, perhaps hundreds of light years away, another intelligence was actively piloting it. If it was a probe, it could be mapping planetary atmospheres, scanning electromagnetic activity, even eavesdropping on Earth's radio chatter. 
and if it was transmitting this data back home, then right now, somewhere in the galaxy, someone was learning about us. The arrival of 3IE Atlas forced humanity to confront questions that had lingered in the shadows for decades. If it was artificial, then it was proof, not speculation, that we are not alone. It also meant that interstellar travel was not an impossible dream. It was happening right now, in our own backyard. But Miyokaku's warning was clear. A civilization capable of building and deploying such a craft would be far older and more advanced than our own, perhaps by millions of years. Their motives could be as simple as exploration or as complex as long-term surveillance. The whisper that began in the cold darkness beyond the Kuiper Belt had become a voice. And that voice was speaking to us, whether we were ready to listen or not. It had been days since the first whispers of 3IE Atlas rippled through the scientific community, yet the sense of unease had only deepened. The object was still out there, gliding through the solar system with the precision of a surgeon's hand, its every movement deliberate, its silence deafening. In control rooms across the world, teams huddled over glowing screens, watching as the data streams updated in real time. Every new reading seemed to confirm the same impossible truth. This was no drifting rock. This was something that knew exactly what it was doing. Miyoku's voice, calm but edged with gravity, had become a constant presence in the media. We sent probes to Mars, to the moons of Jupiter, to the frozen edges of the Kuiper belt without asking permission from whatever might be there, he reminded the public. Why should we expect others to behave differently? This may not be their test, it may be ours. And the way we respond could decide whether we are ever approached again. The words lingered in the minds of millions. Was this a first contact or a silent evaluation? When the James Webb Space Telescope finally locked its gaze on 3IE Atlas, the images that came back were unlike anything the astronomers had prepared for. The object's surface was not the chaotic rubble of an asteroid, nor the smooth ice of a comet. It was sculpted, a lattice of crystalline facets, each one catching sunlight and bending it in ways that made the object shimmer like a jewel adrift in the void. The panels shifted subtly as it moved, as though sensing and adjusting to invisible currents. Some engineers saw the fingerprints of advanced metamaterials, surfaces engineered to adapt in real time to solar winds and electromagnetic fields. Others whispered of something far stranger, a living machine, a biomechanical hybrid designed to survive the vacuum of space as naturally as a deep sea creature survives the crushing depths of the ocean. If that was true, then its creators had erased the line between life and technology entirely. But the real shock came when scientists began to study how it interacted with light. 3IE Atlas did not simply reflect sunlight, it harvested it. Photons vanished into its surface, stored like currency, then released in bursts so precise they could have been timed by an atomic clock. Infrared, radio, microwave. Each pulse was deliberate, each interval exact. Some believed this was the propulsion system, a photonic drive, sipping energy until the moment it would need to leap forward. Others suspected communication, a language written not in words, but in wavelengths. And then came the most unsettling theories of all, that it could bend light at the quantum level, cloaking itself until the exact moment it wanted to be seen. If that was true, then its sudden discovery was no accident. It had chosen to step into the spotlight. While engineers tracked its path, cryptographers dissected its pulses, Patterns emerged, not random, not noise. The golden ratio, pi, Fibonacci spirals, numbers that appear in seashells, galaxies, and the architecture of DNA. These were not cultural symbols. They were universal truths, the kind of constants any intelligent species would recognize, a handshake across the abyss. If these patterns are intentional, then 3IE Atlas is not just here. It is saying, we understand the same universe you do, Miyoku said in one broadcast. Simulations showed that Atlas would not stay. 
Its path was a grand tour, a sweep past the inner planets, a brush with Jupiter's magnetic veil, and then departure. But the way it would leave was impossible. It would rise out of the solar plane at an angle no natural object could achieve without a massive injection of energy, which meant that somewhere in its silent hull, a propulsion system waited, one we had yet to detect. It would not come to Earth. It would not wave. It would simply vanish into the dark, leaving only questions in its wake. And if it could do this, how many others had done it before, unseen? Every maneuver, every pulse of light, every refusal to approach felt like a statement. Not a greeting, not a threat. Something more subtle, a demonstration of reach, of patience, of control. Miyoku's words echoed in the minds of those watching. If it is artificial, then it is already the most important artifact humanity has ever encountered. It proves the stars are not empty, and it proves that whoever built it knows we are here. In the final days before its closest approach to Jupiter, the object began to change. The crystalline panels shifted more rapidly now, their angles catching sunlight in dazzling flashes that rippled across its surface like waves. The energy bursts increased in frequency, their intervals tightening, as though counting down to something. In a darkened control room in Chile, a young astronomer leaned closer to her monitor. It's accelerating, she whispered. The numbers confirmed it. 3IE Atlas was no longer drifting. It was moving with intent. The world watched as it skimmed the edge of Jupiter's magnetosphere, stealing momentum in a maneuver so precise it could have been plotted by a supercomputer. And then, without warning, it released a burst of energy unlike any before. A blinding spike across multiple spectra that briefly overwhelmed sensors from Earth to Saturn's orbit. When the instruments cleared, 3IE Atlas was gone from its projected path. It had shifted course, climbing out of the solar plane, its velocity climbing beyond anything natural. For hours, the data feeds were silent. Then just as the world began to believe it had vanished entirely, a final signal arrived. It was faint, almost lost in the background noise, but its structure was unmistakable. A sequence of prime numbers followed by a pause. And then, nothing. Some called it a farewell, others a marker, a breadcrumb left for those who might one day follow. Perhaps 3IE Atlas will never return. Perhaps it will slip into the dark between the stars carrying with it everything it has learnt about us. But its presence has already changed humanity. It has forced us to imagine our place in a hierarchy we cannot yet see. It has made us wonder whether the next visitor will be as quiet or whether one day the silence will finally break.